This is your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS Television. I am Masafal Hajinamo, and you're watching TOS News Update. President Mamadou Buhari has reiterated that Nigeria and her security forces remain resolutely committed to containing security challenges in the nation and region and addressing their root causes. He made this known at the virtual meeting held with the United States Secretary Antony Blinken and Nigerian Foreign Minister Jofi Onyema on Tuesday. The security challenges in Nigeria remain of great concern to us and impacted more negatively by existing complex negative pressures in the Sahel, Central Africa and West Africa, as well as the Lake Chad region. Compounded as the situation remains, Nigeria and her security forces remain resolutely committed to containing them and addressing their root causes. In this connection, and considering the growing security challenges in West and Central Africa, the Gulf of Guinea, Lake Chad region, and the Sahel, weighing heavily on Africa, underscores the need for the United States to consider relocating AFRICOM headquarters from Stuttgart in Germany to Africa and near the theater of operations. Secretary Blinken emphasized the United States' renewed commitment to multilateral institutions and noted the constructive leadership role Nigeria plays in global affairs. Niger State Governor Abubakar Sani Bello says Boko Haram has taken over Kauri community in the state, hoisted its flags in both Kauri and Chiroro local government areas of the state. This is what uh, we have I've been engaging the federal government with. And unfortunately, it has now gotten to this stage that uh, if care is not taken, nobody, not even Abuja is safe. We have been saying this for long. We have been saying this and uh, all efforts have been in vain. I hope with the outcome of these banditry activities and uh, terrorist activities, I hope the time has come now to see reasons for a very coordinated military action to take place so that we displace. And to insecurity, Bola Tinubu, the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, during his visit to the State House in Abuja, says that the security situation of the country requires serious evaluation and management. According to the former governor of Lagos State, the best way out of the national crisis is cooperation and unity. He further stated that there is no president or leader that will want his nation fractured in tribalism, religious differences and others. Therefore, the call for serious management and serious evaluation and dialogue once in a while is necessary. At least 20 soldiers have been feared, killed in a serial attack meant to neutralize Boko Haram, Islamic State, West African province. The Nigerian Air Force, through its official Twitter account, said it was investigating visuals and reports being circulated. The airstrike, according to a soldier, was carried out by the Nigerian Air Force fighter jet, which mistook the gun truck carrying the troops for terrorists. And the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency says it has recruited 250 new cadets to man its various platforms in the Lagos Bayasa Coastal Corridor. The agency director general, Bashir Jamo, made this note to newsmen in Patakot on Monday. Jamo, who was represented by his special assistant on communications and strategy, Ubong Essien, at a news conference, said the recruitment exercise was part of the current drive to develop local capacity for improved operations. This is your digital first Pan African news network, TOS Television, and you're watching TOS News Update. More stories from Africa when we return to stay. Welcome back. The World Health Organization has said the theme for this year's vaccination week is vaccines bring us closer. According to the WHO Regional Director for Africa, Dr. Machidi Somoeti, the theme serves as a reminder that the power of vaccines to fight disease, save lives and bring us closer to a healthier, safer or more prosperous future. 
Machi Diso further noted that significant gains in immunization have been made in recent years. In an historic milestone, the WHO African region was certified free of wild polyvirus in 2020, where over 40 African countries also eliminated maternal and neonatal tetanus. And to Morocco, where farmer Mohamed Morabet is hoping to come out of the dark and sell his hashish his summer on the open market as Morocco plans to legalize cannabis for medical use. The government of the world stop hashish production nation last month ratified a draft bill to legalize its medical use, and Parliament is expected to debate the legislation this week. According to a report released last year by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, Morocco is the world's biggest producer of cannabis, resin, or hashish. And now to Burundi, where they freed some 1,300 prisoners Monday at the beginning of a presidential pardon, which aims to free up overcrowded jails. At a prison in Bojumbura, almost 1,000 inmates left their cells at the ceremony attended by President Evariste Ndaye Shimye. A total of 5,255 inmates, 40% of Burundi's prison population will be released in the coming weeks. 3,000 will be immediately released, and another 2,000 will have their sentences cut. On a global scene, Makeshift pyres are being built in, in crematoriums in India's capital Delhi as the city runs out of space to cremate its dead. Deaths have been steadily rising in India as a deadly second wave of COVID-19 infections devastated the country, with 380 recorded in Delhi alone on Monday. Medical oxygen, intensive care units, beds and life-saving machines are in short supply. India has recorded more than a million COVID-19 cases in just a few days. Still talking COVID-19, the European Commission has started legal action against British Swedish pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca due to breaches of its COVID-19 supply contract. The EU executive branch began the process on Friday because some terms of the contract have not been respected, Commission spokesperson Stefan de Keresmeke said on Monday. The 27 EU member states support the move, according to Der Keresmeke. The case is to be heard in Belgian court. You are still watching your digital first Pan African News Network to your television, and this is News Update. More stories when we return to stay. Thank you for staying tuned. In business, the Nigerian stock exchange market posted its gains at the end of the trading session, making it the sixth day of a bullish run. The all share index increased by plus 0.04% to close at 39,318.52 from 39,301.8 to index point. The market value of the Nigerian stock exchange currently stands at 20.57 trillion naira. Its year to date returns currently stands at minus 2.36%. The market closed in profit as Transcorp led 25 gainers and Conoil topped the 17 losers chart with a strong bullish movement by the NSE ASI. And to Brexit, while well, the European Parliament is expected to ratify the post-Brexit EU-UK trade deal amid tensions including a French threat of reprisals against the UK. The trade and cooperation agreement has been operating provisionally since January and is expected to be ratified by MEPs later on Tuesday. French Europe Minister Clement Bourne accused the UK of blocking fish and fright. He said the EU could respond with reprisals in financial services. And in entertainment, the number of people watching the Oscars dropped to an all-time low on Sunday overnight figures revealed. Just 9.85 million US viewers tuned into the ceremony, a drop of 58% from the previous low of 23.6 million in 2020. Interest in the event was dealt a double blow by the lack of blockbusters cut tenders and audience fatigue with drab COVID-era award ceremonies. And despite historic wins for Anthony Hopkins, Chloe Zhao and Daniel Kaluuya, reviews were overwhelmingly negative. And in sports, Thierry Henry, Alan Scherer have been named as first players inducted into the official Premier League Hall of Fame in recognition of a combined 435 goals and seven Golden Boot awards. Arsenal's all-time top scorer Henry won two Premier League titles under Arsene Wenger and was part of the Invisibles team that was unbeaten throughout the 2003-2004 title-winning campaign. France's record goal scorer and 1998 World Cup winner scored more than 20 Premier League goals in five consecutive seasons between 20, 2001 and 2 and 2005 and 6. Alan Scherer scored 260 Premier League goals for Blackburn and Newcastle. 
Scherer, who won the title with Blackburn in 1995, is the Premier League's record goal scorer, netting 260 goals in 14 seasons for Blackburn and Newcastle. Aimba have been permitted to use the Aimba International Stadium in Abba for their CAF Confederation Cup Group A tie with Orlando Pirates Wednesday, but the hosts are still battling with putting the floodlights in order. It was initially suggested that the game might hold outside Nigeria until the federal government approval that Orlando Pirates should be given a waiver to land in the country without the rigor of quarantinement for persons from the Southern African and other countries that are on the list of high risk for COVID-19. And that is TOS News Update on your digital first Pan African News Network. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Stay with us and enjoy more programs on the network. I am Merciful Ajinomo. Thank you for watching.